Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to graph our absolute value inequality. Uh, absolute value of x minus 2 is greater than y plus 3. Now, to graph this, basically what we've been doing is identifying the transformations when, it th when it's in this format, you know, or this format. So it's solved for y. So I can see, since this is not solved for y, this is kind of making it a little confusing. So the first thing I want to do is isolate my variable y. So to do that, I'll subtract a 3 on both sides. Therefore, I have the absolute value of x minus 2 minus 3 is greater than y. But again, I kind of want the y on the left side, all right? So notice that this is greater than y. Or if we read it from right to left, y is less than all of this. So therefore, I'm going to rewrite this as y less than absolute value of x minus 2 minus 3. All right, so you see how I kind of did that? Kind of tricky. Um, notice how I kind of had to like flip the sign when I rewrote on the other side. So now I can graph this. Now, but before I graph it, I got to understand what are my transformations that are happening to my, um, to, my, to my graph. And I notice I have an x minus 2 minus 3. Well, that is going to be represented as our h and our k for our transformations, where here's the, here's the parent graph with no transformations, right? That has a vertex of 0, 0 going uh, with the graph. Well, now when I have h and k, what that does is that changes my vertex to hk. So it's x opposite of h plus k. So x opposite of 2. That means my h is 2. And my k is negative 3. So now I go ahead and graph my new vertex, which was at 0, 0, but with my transformations is now at positive 2, negative 3. All right, so what that tells you is my graph from 0, 0, from the parent graph, has been shifted to the right two units and then down three units. Now, I notice that there's no other transformation that I have in my graph. There's no compression or stretching. So therefore, I can just follow the pattern of the parent graph, over 1, up 1, over 2, up 2, from my vertex. So I'll just go over 1, up 1, over 2, up 2, over 1, up 1, over 2, up 2. And there is, ah, crap. Before I graph, before you get all happy, we plotted the points. Those are the points that are going to make it up. But since this is an inequality, we've got to determine, is the graph a part of the solution or not? Or all the points that are on the graph a part of the solution or not? So to determine that, we've got to look at our inequality sign. It doesn't matter if it's greater than or less than. If it's greater than or equal to or less than or equal to, then our line would be solid. That's why I stopped myself, because this line is supposed to represent as a dashed line meaning that all the points that lie, in the lot, that lie in that graph are not a part of the solution. So if you plugged in any point and plugged them in for your inequality, let's just choose one, actually. Let's choose the vertex, x, y. So let's plug that in. So y is negative 3 is less than absolute value of 2 minus 2 minus 3. So 2 minus 2 is 0. Absolute value of 0 is 0. So I have negative 3 is less than negative 3. Well, negative 3 is never less than negative 3. Negative 3 is equal to negative 3. So that's why that's false. And that means any, any point that's on that graph will also be false. That's why it's dashed. But what about the points that are above or below the graph? So therefore, we need to choose a point that does not lie on the graph. The best point to pick is always 0, 0, as long as the graph does not go through that point. So now I'm going to plug in 0, 0. Okay. Now I have 0 is less than 0 minus 2 is negative 2. Absolute value of negative 2 is 2 minus 3. 2 minus 3 is negative 1. 0 is less than negative 1. That is false. Since inside my inside or above my graph is false, that means all the points above my line is false. And all the points above or below my line are going to be true. So that's where I'll shade. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you graph an absolute value inequality. Thanks.